Hello everyone, it's Tale of the Toaster, one of the people who's been working on the fan translation of Inazuma 11 Go Galaxy, Big Bang and Supernova. A lot of people ask me on this channel, how do you play these games and can we play them on cartridge in particular? This is a big one for me because uh, certainly as a YouTube creator for the Inazuma 11 games, I need to be able to play these games on my capture card and it does just feel better to play them on console instead of uh, on a computer anyway, especially when you consider the legal side of things. With this guide, I want to show you the most legal possible way to play the English translation of Inazuma 11 Go Galaxy, which will be on console. It will require a little bit of system hacking, but hopefully this should take you through everything you need uh, start to finish, and we should get this game running. Little bit of bonus footage to splice in actually. I suppose I should prove these are not just boxes. We do have the official cartridge in here as well. There's Big Bang. And here we have Supernova as well. So these are the real deal. I don't encourage just playing the ROM on a computer. It's really always good when we can support the official product itself and do what we can for Inazuma 11 as a whole. So the first thing you'll need to do is take note of the version of the console firmware that you're using. You'll see on screen that this 3DS that I've taken as an example is on version uh, 11.14. Now this is the most recent uh, edition of the firmware and I've done that on purpose. You can see here on the official Nintendo page I'm using the most recent software and I'm basically doing that to prove that it works and I feel like a lot of pe uh, people who may want to play this fan translation are likely to have an up-to-date version. So we're going to run with that. But this is the website that's going to get things started. We're on 3ds.hacks.guide and uh, this will eventually be able to get us something called Luma 3DS which we'll use to patch our game. So you can read all this if you need a bit more context to know what you're doing. I've already read it before, so I'm gonna just move to the next screen. Now, why we needed to check the version of the console is, first of all, for the hardware, you need to know whether you're using the new Nintendo 3DS or 2DS or an old one. As you can see, we're using an old one and I think that will be the case for many people. But if you do want to play on these consoles, then I recommend just going through this website yourself and following the instructions, because they are pretty simple. Even I can do it. Um, but we're going to play on this console, and we checked that the version is the most recent, so that means we need to follow this second option from 11.4 to 11.14. So we follow this link, and this will tell us uh, instructions that we're going to need to know. Most importantly, we've got three links here. So we've got Safe B9S Installer, Boot9 Strap, and Luma 3DS. These three are essential. So we're going to open these up on different tabs. And in order, you will just want to download them. So keep flicking back and make sure you've read uh, the right ones. Safe B9, there is only one zip folder to download. So just go straight for that. Then we look at Boot9 Strap. You need the standard one, not dev kit and not NTR. So that means you need specifically this one that's fourth in the list. So let's get that downloaded. It all works pretty quickly. And then finally for Luma 3DS, you again just want the normal zip. So those have downloaded. I've downloaded them before, so I may need to edit those file names a little bit, but for most of you, I imagine this is the first time. So now what we need to do is get this console off and take out its SD card to get it in the computer. Now it is recommended you have at least eight gigabytes of storage on the SD card. A 3DS will come with a four gigabyte SD card by default um, but these days. It's pretty cheap, so I recommend just picking up a new one and using that. Uh, and again, a system transfer between SD cards is really, really easy if you need to do so. So I'm going to take this SD card out, got that there, and we're just going to put that into the computer. So 
So that opens up uh, my new SD file. All we've got in here is the raw data of the 3DS itself. We don't need to fiddle with that, thankfully, but we need to transfer some other things across into it. So step one is from the Luma side of things first. So this is this one. Drag that into the root of the SD and you'll want to extract that. So do that, that will give you uh, the two files that you need. We don't need the zip folder itself or any kind of folder, so I'm just gonna move those to the root and get rid of these folders that we don't need. Next will be boot nine strap. So first here we do need to make another folder. So create that and call it exactly boot nine strap. And then we want to go into that and drag in the contents of this zip file. But we don't actually need all of it. In fact, we only need one thing or two. Let's double check. Yeah, so boot9strap.firm and boot9strap.firm.sha. So once we've got all those, we can delete the file once, uh, the empty folder once again. So we've just got these contents here. And finally, we want to copy safe B9S installer from the zip onto the root of the SD. So once again, copy it across, extract it. Now this is the one that has quite a lot of different things in it. All we need is safe B9 installer dot bin. I have no idea what the other things do. I would be the wrong person to ask, but we are safe to delete those. Uh, I'm not sure what the consequences of keeping them would be, but I just uh, do what I'm told. I'm not a hacker by trade. So that is everything we needed from step one. So safely eject your SD card and let's get that back into the 3DS itself. Okay, and we want to power on. So if you have not already connected your 3DS to the internet, that will be a required part of the process. So if this is your normal 3DS you're doing this with, uh, that might be, uh, that, that will be already done. But of course, if you have maybe bought another 3DS for the purpose of doing this for safety, because as we know, anything with hacking can brick a console in very rare scenarios. Following this to the letter should mean you're absolutely fine, but just in the event of error, uh, I can see some people getting another console. We want to head into internet settings and connection settings, whichever one you use as your primary, you want to open. So that's connection one for me. Then change settings. Then we need to go to page two. So that will be DNS. To open that up, and then we change auto obtain DNS to no and click detailed setup. So now we've got all of these blank DNS values and we need to change both of these to the exact figures that you're going to see on screen. So I'm just going to type these in real quick. So here it is again. That is the exact number that we need to set for both of the DNS settings, that's primary and secondary, and then we hit OK. Save that and it will prompt you to do a connection test, which is definitely recommended, but it should still succeed, which it has. So that means we're now safe to power off our console and move on to the next step. Now this is important. So for section three, you need to hold the L button, the R button, the A button, <laughs> this is a bit of a handful, and up on the D-pad all at once. So that's up on the D-pad, A and both of the shoulder buttons when you turn the power on. And if you've done this correctly, it will take you to 
part of the settings menu straight away, which it has. We've gone straight to the system update screen from turning the console on. So you can already tell that's uh, different from a usual setup. Next, you want to accept this update, accept all the terms. But what you'll notice is that when you do this update, it will eventually give you an error message and say that it has failed. It's failed from uh, what Nintendo was expecting, but this is actually a requirement on our end. It's just part of the trick. So allow the console to restart and then it will do so in this very, very special screen indeed. And this is where the magic happens. So we are now in what's called Safe B9S Installer. And once it's done, all the safety checks it takes a couple seconds at most. Just hit left, down, right, up, and A. As it says on the screen here, do that and it will take a little moment to install some files. So that should be a success. We now press A to restart the console. Now this screen gives us a few options. If we're looking at uh, the guide that we see on screen, it tells us that we need to turn on exactly one of these things and that's show NAND or user string in system settings. We also want an additional one. This is a necessary step for Inazuma 11 Go Galaxy and that is enable game patching. So we're gonna do those two and the rest of us are not too important. So we then press start and after a second or two, that will save and reboot the console. So now that uh, all three bits of software have been installed, if we were to take out a legal cartridge for Inazuma 11 Go Galaxy and give this a test, we will see that the region lock that you previously have on all Nintendo consoles from the 3DS onwards has now been removed and we can play this Japanese game that we previously could not. However, the process is not done yet. We have the game running, but it is currently still in Japanese. So this brings to an end the Luma 3DS installation side of the guide. That's all the hacking we need to do on the 3DS itself. If you're following the website, it will give you a few more steps on how to continue. And that's used to get uh, certain other bits and pieces for your game, uh, for your console, that will allow you, allow you to do all kinds of crazy hacking things. But we're gonna try and stay as close to legal as we can and only do the bare essentials. So anything from this point on is optional. We're just going to stick with what we've got right now, which is having playable Inazuma 11 on our English, European or American 3DS. So what we see here now is a video on the Sync YouTube channel. This chap was the project leader for the Inazuma 11 Go Galaxy fan translation patch. And currently this is where you would access the game patch file itself. I will also have the link in my video description but I can't show you that because I haven't finished making it yet. Case in point, I am recording. So we're gonna use Sync's link instead. And if you look in his video description here, the one we want is download the patch now. That will take us to a public Google Drive link. And this folder here called ROMFS, you don't need to explore any further, just right click that and download. This will go through the process of turning the file into a zip. And once we've got that zip, we will have everything we need. So once you've downloaded the ROMFS file online, it should look roughly like this on the inside. I can't guarantee it looks exactly the same because I'm using a developer version of the game that may be slightly more up to date than what's currently available and I haven't actually checked the contents of the public one, but the main thing that it's gonna need is these two IE6 files within the ROMFS 
we want to keep them within that ROM FS folder. Now, next, I've put the SD card from my 3DS back into the computer now. As we can see, this is still SDHC like before with Boot9 Strap, Luma, and everything else that we installed previously. So you want to head into the Luma folder, and currently this will only have config.bin. We need to make a new folder here, and that folder will be called titles. It may already be there if you've installed a game before. If not, we will need to make that. Next within titles, this is where we actually specify what version of the game we are playing. So the file that we download online will be the same either way, whether you're playing Supernova or Big Bang, but you will need to specify the difference here. So we create a new folder and paste in a very long code that you'll definitely want to take from the description. But whether you're playing Big Bang or Supernova, there will be one slight difference. I'm playing Supernova for the purposes of this walkthrough, so ours will end in BB0. Whereas if we were playing Big Bang, it would end in BA00. So one letter difference, but you'll want to copy and paste that either way. So if we head into there, this is where we can now drop and drag the ROM FS file that we downloaded online. So that may take a little bit because it's about 1.4 gigabytes or so, but not too bad. It is only a 3DS game. And that is now done. So we can close this. We are done with the computer at this stage as long as we've done everything correctly. So get your SD card ejected and we will move back to the 3DS. Now, as long as we've followed the guide correctly, we shouldn't need to do this, but as a double check, I'm gonna hold select while I press power. This is an easier way to get into the uh, hacking menu, as it were, for Luma 3DS. Just need to double check again that enable game patching is enabled. The online guide will only tell you that this needs to be on, but for the sake of Inazuma 11, you will need that game patching as well. So just press start and the console will reboot with that in mind. And once it's done, we will see Supernova here once again. The title screen on the home menu itself will always be in Japanese, so don't worry about that. Just launch the software and we'll see what we get. Because if we've done this correctly, we should now have the full working English patch and as we can see, there's my name in the credits. We have the English patch of Inazuma 11 Go Galaxy Supernova running on an official European 3DS. And that's all you need to do. So there's quite a lot of steps, but all of them are relatively simple. So as long as you follow this step by step and have a cartridge of the game, then you will be able to play in a Zoom 11 Go Galaxy in English, something we've been waiting for for the best part of five years. So, thanks for following this guide, and I hope you enjoy the game. And while I have a little bit of football footage in the background, just know if you have any questions, don't feel uh, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll try my best to answer what we can. Same with everyone else in the fan translation team. We want to help you play this game. So if you get stuck, just let us know. But I think if you follow this video from start to finish, then that should give you everything you need to see these beautiful English words in this long lost Japanese game. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you another time, especially in my full playthrough of this game on this channel.